Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and a videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Still got plenty to discuss from WrestleMania weekend. Don't forget to check out NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding the fallout from WrestleMania and check out my photos from WrestleMania at Facebook.com slash NoDQ D-O-T-C-O-M and just click on the albums. You'll see the pictures. Got your questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. Let's get started with the first one today from CJ Records. Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Do you think that they really need to pull out all the stops to sign her? The reaction she got was amazing. If they are serious about giving Divas a chance, is she the person to bring credibility to the Divas division? Well, here's the thing. If Ronda Rousey was to compete in WWE, I think it would be a one-time thing for WrestleMania. And that's still very much up in the air right now. It will depend on what her situation is with UFC. But what I got from WrestleMania was it's going to be something with her involved in the mix at next year's WrestleMania. Whether it's The Rock and Ronda Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie in a handicap match or The Rock versus Triple H with Stephanie in Triple H's corner and Ronda in The Rock's corner. That seems to be the direction WWE is going in for next year's WrestleMania. And The Rock has even said it himself during interviews that if he was going to be part of WrestleMania in another match, he would want to break records. He would want to do something that hasn't been done before. A mixed tag team match, The Rock and Ronda Rousey against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, that would be huge business. That would be a match that could very well shatter all previous records in WWE. She's a huge name right now. She's arguably the greatest female MMA fighter in the world today. And I think it's just a matter of WWE and UFC being able to come to an agreement. I mean, WrestleMania 32 is still a year away. And, um, you know, I think if WWE has it their way, they're going to do that mixed tag team match and hopefully break all records, and at the very least, I would expect her to be involved in some fashion, perhaps being in The Rock's corner if they do a singles match instead. Um, but either way, that's what, I, that's what I got from the WrestleMania angle, that that was setting up something big for next year's WrestleMania. All right, this one comes from songwriter John. Hey Aaron, do you think WrestleMania went too far with many entrances? I really felt many were very overrated, like midgets for Sting, and that had the worst, but I thought Rusev's was pretty cool with the tank. Please answer in video. Well, the thing about WrestleMania is it's all about the glitz and the glamour and uh, the big entrances, just like the Super Bowl has the halftime show and all the pyro and, and all the, uh, the interesting stuff going on. WWE does the same thing for WrestleMania. They have the big pyro and the fireworks, and they have the entrances. Uh, you know, it's WrestleMania. It's the biggest show of the year. So you want to do something over the top and different and unique from what you have on your typical WWE television show. So I did not feel that WWE went too far. I think there was a really good balance of wrestling. There was tons of great wrestling, and then you had uh, the, the entrances and I thought that they were really cool from what I could see. I mean, if you guys saw Noah's video, um, the one negative about the experience at WrestleMania is that we had this huge production tent that was blocking our view of the entrances. And if you notice from my pictures, there's no pictures from the entranceway because I couldn't see anything. But um, from what I could see on the screen and what I was able to watch on the network, um, the entrances were really cool. I especially loved Triple H's Terminator entrance. Uh, with Arnold, and the crowd just popped huge for that. You know, it was really cool, and it made WrestleMania all that more special. So I, I don't feel WWE went too far with the entrances this year. All right, this one comes from I Am Avian. Hey, Aaron, you truly need to address the daylight situation at WrestleMania. A lot of people, including JR, criticized it during the show. Don't you agree that the atmosphere would have been better overall and the show entrances would have been cooler with lights and pyros? Well, I think WWE did the best they could under the circumstances. And um, for me as a viewer, live in attendance, it did not bother me that it was daylight. I, I felt that it was just as enjoyable as it would have been in an indoor stadium. Um, but at the same time, I think from a production standpoint, it does affect the fans, especially the ones that have obstructed views, whether it's those big giant pillars 
or the, the production tent. Um, you know, that's the one negative. But as far as the daylight affecting the entrances, it didn't really bother me that much. I mean, for Bray Wyatt's entrance, it wasn't nearly as impactful when he came out. It, it's much cooler when it's done inside uh, with the, the lighting and everything and everybody with their cell phones lit up. Uh, it just didn't look as good with uh, Bray Wyatt's entrance. But still, I, I like the fact that it's a change of pace every now and then, doing the show outdoors. Um, it's something different from the norm. Um, but I, I could see the arguments either way. And for some, for some times uh, with the out, outdoor stadium shows, you have a situation where, uh, you know, the, the crowd noise uh, just goes up into the air. And uh, sometimes it doesn't come off well on television. Um, but from my perspective, being there live, the crowd was red hot for almost the entire show. And uh, even though uh, it was very hot outside, it was about 80, 82 degrees. Um, you know, it seemed like the fans were still into the show from start to finish, despite the heat and uh, despite being outdoors and having the distractions uh, with the, the um, obstructions and the, the pillars and all that stuff. It seemed like the, like most of the fans were really having a good time regardless of um, the environment. All right, got this question here from Worthless Nut. Being in Texas this year, how do you feel about Chuck Norris entering the Hall of Fame with possibly Undertaker going in? I feel it would be a good addition with their history at Survivor Series, and it's Chuck Norris. Well, yes, Chuck effing Norris. I guess if you were to induct a celebrity into the Hall of Fame, uh, Chuck Norris would be a good choice just because he's Chuck Norris and you don't need a reason. Chuck Norris is Chuck Norris. Um, and yeah, he did play a a significant role at Survivor Series, getting involved with the Undertaker's match against Yokozuna, making sure that there was law and order. I would be fine with that. I mean, at this point, I try not to let the whole celebrity wing of the Hall of Fame bother me. So if they want to induct Chuck Norris, go for it. Why not? Um, you know, Chuck Norris is an icon. Why not put him in the Hall of Fame? Whatever. Who cares at this point? All right, this one comes from Raw is War 98. Hey, Aaron, what did you think of Neville's Raw debut? Do you think he will go far? Well, I think he's off to a great start. I mean, debuting NXT talent the night after WrestleMania is a really smart decision because you have those fans that are your most diehard fans. They're, they're viewers of NXT. And all night during this show on Raw, uh, these fans were chanting NXT from start to finish. I mean, it was clear that this was a crowd. Just about everybody in that building watches NXT. So when when Neville came out, I was about to call him Adrian Neville. He's just Neville now. Uh, when Neville came out, uh, the place just went absolutely insane. And they popped for everything he did. And he came off as a star from his very first night on television. The crowd reacted to him like he was a major superstar. And, uh, you know, first impressions are everything. So your casual viewers that are watching Raw, they see this new guy come out and they see all these people reacting to him. And he looked good. He, you know, it was a short match, but he was able to showcase a few things and he looked really impressive. Um, to me, it was a home run. Great debut. Couldn't have done it any better. So we'll see where things go. And, uh, you know, the fact that they let him go out there and just be Neville and not give him some kind of Mighty Mouse gimmick that was rumored, um, definitely a positive. All right, this one comes from FM Towns Marte. With Sami Zayn not debuting on the Raw after Mania, when do you think will be the best time to debut him? Also, do you think it was a missed opportunity due to the hot crowd for NXT stars? Well, there's only so many people you can debut on one show. You had Neville debut. You had the Lucha Dragons debut. I would rather WWE wait and debut Sami Zayn when they feel the time is right and let him be able to debut on his own without a bunch of other people debuting so you can really put the focus on him. As far as when to debut him, I would hope to see him before next year's WrestleMania. Uh, maybe SummerSlam, maybe um, one of the upcoming pay-per-views in a city like Chicago. I mean, maybe Extreme Rules is too soon, but certainly by around SummerSlam later in the year, I'd love to see him make his debut on his own, uh, not debut too many NXT people. I mean, I've talked about this in previous videos. I think WWE should slowly roll out the NXT stars onto the main roster, not have too many debut at once, maybe one or two 
every six months or so. I think that's the best way to go and just don't bring in too many people at one time because then people are just going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, so yeah, maybe six months down the line, put in Sami Sammy Zayn and then uh, maybe after next year's WrestleMania, you could debut Kevin Owens. All right, this one comes from Kyle Mitchell, 84. Hey, Aaron, with Brian and Cena winning the IC and US titles, do you think the WWE would risk having these titles headlining pay-per-views? Please answer in video. Well, I think it would depend on the situation. Um, we've seen it in the past where the IC title was the main event. You go back to SummerSlam 92. It doesn't happen all that often, but with John Cena being the U.S. champion, I could definitely see that as a possibility. And I could see title versus title headlining a pay-per-view, um, either Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins um, on a pay-per-view or John Cena versus Seth Rollins. Uh, WWE has a lot of different options and ways they can go. Um, and uh, we've seen it before. I think last year we had um, Evolution versus The Shield. That was the main event ahead of the WWE title match. I wouldn't do it too often. And now that Seth Rollins is the champion, um, the WWE title should be headlined on pay-per-views as much as possible. But every now and then, if WWE wants to do one pay-per-view with the U.S. title as the main event, um, you know, I think that, that would be a good idea to elevate those titles a little bit. All right, this one comes from Kyle Mitchell 84. Got another question from him. Hey, Aaron, do you think the WWE could make the Andre the Giant Battle Royal a stipulation type match in the future? Say the winner becomes the number one contender for the US and IC title. Please answer in video. Um, I really don't see that happening. I think that the Battle Royal is a joke at this point, and uh, I don't see any purpose in doing that in the future. Um, I really did enjoy the Battle Royal, though, from WrestleMania. I thought it was. Uh, very well done. I uh, wasn't a fan of Big Show winning. And I know people are arguing, well, you know, it's Big Show, big guy like Andre the Giant. He came in uh, portrayed as the son of Andre the Giant. But to me, they just erased what they did at the previous WrestleMania with Cesaro winning. And, um, you know, I'd rather see a younger star win the Andre Battle Royal. Um, I just think that match could have elevated somebody. As far as it being a stipulation in the future, um, I, I really don't think they should keep doing it. I mean, they, they probably will just because it's a, a easy way to get a lot of people on the WrestleMania card. Um, but I don't really see the need to add any kind of stipulation to it. All right, got one more question here from Kayfabe Candy Ass. Does anything take the heat out of a room like a Stephanie McMahon uh, shitty music, her shitty music interrupting a promo? What's the point? Is it time Daddy reeled her in a bit? This is reaching 2001 levels of McMahon overexposure. Well, the one thing that, that annoys me is, uh, you know, with this whole storyline uh, at WrestleMania and possibly leading to a mixed tag team match, it just means we're going to get another year of Triple H and Stephanie. Think about that. If, if that's what WWE is building towards, uh, we're going to just have more Stephanie and Triple H 20-minute promos for the next year. And I was hoping uh, a year and a half ago that WWE would drop the authority angle. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere in, in the near future. You know, I thought it was going to end at Survivor Series. Nope. Thought it was going to end at WrestleMania with Sting conquering Triple H and ending the authority. Nope. And uh, now I guess we have to wait to WrestleMania 32 to see if The Rock and possibly Ronda Rousey can shut up Triple H and Stephanie once and for all. Or will it just be another nope? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. So that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and A video. Thanks as always for watching. Like I said, check out No DQ's Facebook page. I posted tons of pictures from WrestleMania weekend, the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania, and Raw. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest, and I will see you guys next time.